Um, he's uh, had a master's degree in uh, engineering in mechanics and mechatronics uh, and graduation with honors at the uh, Czech uh, Technical University in Prague. And afterwards, uh, did uh, continued with a doctor uh, PhD degree in engineering science and mechatronics at the uh, Université Libre de Bruxelles. That's correct. And uh, he's here today. Thank you for presenting the latest uh, uh, flapping mechanism uh, in a paper and a talk called Pitch and Roll Control Mechanism for a Hovering Flapping Wing MAV. Yes. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Um, I will, it will be difficult to talk after my previous speaker, uh, but anyway, I will try to uh, show you something interesting too. Um, I just wanted to say that this is a work of quite small group of people working within the, the Active Structures Laboratory. We are currently only three researchers, but it used to be even less people. And this particular ID uh, started one year ago uh, when working with an intern student, Alexander Hua from Esteca. Uh, and then we de developed the, the idea further. And so this is where we are at the moment. So first of all, I will introduce you a little bit our project, what is our goal. So as, the previous two, as in the previous two speeches, we are interested in a flapping wing MAE, which only has a single wing pair. Uh, and we want to build the system tailless. That means we want to do all the control through the wing motion. Uh, so I, I have nothing against the other designs I showed there. I'm actually impressed by their performance, but this is just to show the difference. And uh, so our goal is to achieve stable hovering flight with such a system. Now, if you look into nature, we can see that there is a certain trend between the wing length and between the mass of, of the bird, of a hummingbird and of the insect. Although for hummingbirds, the, the trend uh, is slightly steeper. Uh, so it is a good idea to place our design somewhere on this uh, linear relationship. Um, actually, if we look at our uh, at the competitors, so <laughs> the successful competitors, uh, you can see that they are following this uh, linear trend. And so we would like to place ourselves somewhere at the, the, um, in the region of larger hummingbirds, uh, which should make our life slightly easier because we can use, let's say, more traditional technologies and some of the off-shelf components. So th the target is 20 centimeter wingspan, around 20 gram uh, total mass, and the frequency, flapping frequency between 20 and 30 hertz. But this is um, an estimate. So this uh, is our uh, current prototype that has no control. It is just for lift uh, uh, production. Um, it has a weight between 10 to 12 grams, depending on the version, and in that includes 5 gram uh, motor. The wingspan is uh, 21 centimeters, and it produces up to 155 newton meters of lift at 4 watts. Uh, it is driven by a brushed or brushless uh, motor. Uh, we use the brushed version for flight tests and uh, brushless for the bench tests. Uh, now, some details on the flapping mechanism. So it is a linkage mechanism. It is printed, uh, 3D printed completely, except for the gears. And it is two stages. The first stage, uh, which is over here, is a slider crank mechanism with an arm here that produces a rocking motion in the, on the intermediary link. And then we amplify this rocking motion by a four bar mechanism uh, to get a flapping amplitude of 120 degrees. Um, it is a little bit complex, but the advantage is that we, uh, each of the stages has some asymmetries. We have seen in the first speech of this section, they were experiencing problems because of this asymmetry. And uh, with this solution, by uh, proper choice of the dimensions, we can compensate these asymmetries. So at the output, we have something that has a symmetric velocity profile. Okay, now a little bit about the wings. So our wings are built of mylar. Uh, I think it's uh, 10 or 15 microns thick mylar. And the shape um, is, uh, the, the membrane itself is loose, and the shape is uh, determined by direction of uh, motion. So you can see it on the video at the bottom. So the, the wing becomes 
cambered and the camber is, twist, it is twisted also. Um, and the orientation changes as the wing reverses. We use some uh, stiffeners from uh, carbon fiber composites and uh, we reinforce a little bit the critical uh, parts of the wing just for increasing the durability. So with, the, with this prototype we can demonstrate a takeoff. This video is actually more than a year old. Uh, but since the flight is inherently unstable, we, we are using a guide wire guard cable, which is not very visible, but it's somewhere here, which stabilizes the flight. So of course now the biggest challenge is what to do to be able to fly without this cable, how to stabilize the system. So in other words, how to generate the control moments necessary. So there was a question in the after one of the previous talks, how do if they observed what the birds are doing. So here is the answer. I mean, hummingbirds, their wings, they are pretty amazing. We can see they can stop them for a moment. They can flap them asymmetrically for a while. They can uh, deviate the wing from the mean stroke plane. They can incline the stroke plane. So this is nice. It's amazing. But for us, there are too many degrees of freedom involved. We cannot uh, afford to have such freedom in the movement of the wings. So we have to simplify things. So this has already been mentioned, but I will just repeat that. So we need to generate three moments around the three axes of the vehicle. The pitch moment can be generated by moving the cycle average lift force backwards or forward. Uh, the roll moment will um, be produced by introducing a difference between the lift of the left and right wing and the yaw moment by difference between the cycle average drag of the left and right wing. Uh, so what we need to be able to is we need to be able to modulate the cycle average lift, cycle average drag, and the position of the lift within the uh, stroke plane. So we have developed and tested two uh, strategies. The first one was similar to the nano hummingbird, uh, very similar to the uh, first talk of today's section, and uh, it was based on deforming the root bars, which were flexible in certain directions, so that we could produce the necessary moments. This was presented at last year's IMF, so I won't go into details here. And I will talk about the second option, which is uh, using amplitude and offset modulation, like we have seen in the previous uh, talk. Uh, but this uh, strategy is well suited for a piezo uh, electric drive, because there you can easily, or yeah, it's easier to change the amplitude, the mean position of, of the piezo. But it, the solution is not so obvious for a language mechanism with which uh, we work. So here you can see again our mechanism. So what can we do to change the amplitude or to change the mean wing position, the offset as we call it? Well, we could uh, change the length of some of our links, but it is quite difficult to, to do. Uh, but what you can also do, you can move some of the joints uh, which connect the mechanism to the frame. And uh, by op when we were doing the optimization of our mechanism, we have found out that if we move those two uh, joints which are marked here, uh, we can control the two things at the same time, the amplitude and offset. But now if you look at the graphs on the left uh, bottom and on the right bottom, uh, you will see two sets of lines. And the red lines, they uh, show the positions of the joint where the amplitude is constant. The blue lines show the positions of the joint where the offset is constant. And you can see that the two lines, they intersect each other at pretty high angles. That means we can find a way how to control only the amplitude and keep the offset constant or vice versa. So if we move our joint along the red arrow, we will control the offset. If we move it in the blue direction, we will control the amplitude. Now, how to do that? So we have thought about many solutions, but then we uh, stayed with the simplest one, uh, which consists of two arms, which are pivoted along, uh, around two hinges. And they have like two channels or slots here. And uh, the inter so they are here, and the uh, intersection of these slots defines the position of the joint. So if we move one of the arms, uh, the joint moves in the channel of the other arm. So this was designed in a way so that the workspace of this mechanism more or less approximates the, the set of lines which we can see 
uh, on the top left uh, corner. So I will now just overlay the, the two graphs. We don't see much, but we can see that the two grids, they are more or less uh, on top of each other. So uh, now we have two joints and we want to generate three moments. So to control roll, we want to increase amplitude on one wing and decrease it on the other one. So we have those two arms which are marked blue with blue arrows and we want to turn them in the same direction. Uh, to control the moment, uh, the pitch moment, we move the, the arms which control the offset. So, uh, sorry, I don't see my pointer. Yeah, so these two arms, we move them uh, up or down together. And then uh, to control the yaw, we do the inverse on each of the wings. Now, why does uh, doing asymmetric offset, so something like this, produce yaw? It is not so easy to explain. It has something to do with the rotation that happens at the stroke reversal. And this is what uh, our aerodynamic model gave us. Uh, so we decided to test it. And as you will see, uh, it works. <laughs> OK, so in total, we have three moments. So we want to produce, so we have three servos. Uh, because the amplitude, we only control it in asymmetric way. We increase it on one wing, decrease it on the other one. So we have coupled the motion of the left and right arm with a parallelogram structure. So we only have one uh, servo that controls the difference in amplitudes. And then we have one server, uh, one servo for each of the uh, offset control arms. Um, there, there are a bit more details on the design in the paper. Uh, at the bottom, you can just see how it works. So this is the roll. This is the pitch, and then we will see the yaw. You can see that the displacement of giants is very, very small, but the small motion is enough to have pretty large differences in the amplitudes and offsets. So this is the, the assembled prototype with which we did all the tests. Uh, it has three uh, hobby king servos, each of two grams on board, so the whole thing is quite heavy. Uh, but this was designed for uh, bench test, so it's not a big problem at the moment, but will be later. Uh, you can see the total mass of the actuators is more than half of, of the whole thing, so we, we have to reduce that. But uh, anyway, uh, this is how it works. So at the left you can see the situation in hover. You can see it's not perfectly symmetric, but it is okay. Now, this is roll. So you can see that there is clearly a big difference between the amplitude on the left wing and on the right wing. This is pitch. So again, you can see that we move the mean wing position up or down. And if this is done asymmetrically, we will have yaw. So this is the yaw command. So here it's just, this figure just shows the two uh, extreme wing positions together. You can see that there are some asymmetries, but in general it, it works uh, maybe even better than we expected. OK, now I will concentrate on each of the commands separately. So you can see the transition between the maximum roll command from the left to the right. So the transition will be right now. So you can see it takes a while in the roll. It takes around four wing beats. You can also observe that on the uh, graph on the right, where we uh, track the angles. Um, so this could be improved, but it's not bad. After two wing beats, we already get the opposite uh, difference in, in um, amplitude. This gets better for pitch. So again, we have the maximum command, and we will switch it to the minimum command in a while. Right now, so you can see here the transition is much faster. It takes less than two wing beats. And this is because of the reaction force in the joints, and also because here we have two servos doing the same job, so it is faster, they have more power. So we took the uh, high-speed camera measurements, and we did a set of tests uh, for combinations of, of the commands. So these graphs show us uh, sort of a map uh, of amplitude and offset. Uh, on the horizontal axis, we have the servo controlling the roll, so difference in amplitudes. On the vertical one, we have uh, the offset, uh, offset servo. And so what is important is that we can see that uh, 
one servo clearly controls uh, the offset and the other one clearly controls the amplitude and the coupling effects are very, very small. So we can control the two things independently. This is just uh, the difference of amplitudes and average offset. So these, uh, these values should be proportional to the moments we want to generate. So in the whole workspace, uh, we can change the amplitude difference um, by plus minus 24 degrees and uh, the offset by plus minus 12 degrees and it gets even better when we control purely pitch or purely roll. Now we have also done some uh, tests of the um, to quantify the moments we, we generate. Uh, we use a custom built um, force balance for that uh, which works fine for cycle averaged quantities. Uh, it is nothing super precise, but it works fine for us. The details were given uh, last year, so we can look, to look into that paper. So this is the pitch uh, moment measured uh, against the, the pitch command. So you can see that in the central part, the relationship is pretty much linear. We get saturation at the limits, which is normal because we actually press the moved joints to the limits, so it just cannot move anymore. Uh, what is not nice is that we have a decrease of performance in the central part, which you can see over here. So this is the lift force, the frequency, the current. These measurements were taken at the moderate frequencies. I will uh, show you what happens when we go faster later. And why is there this uh, performance decrease? This is because when we displace the joints, they get a very good fix at the limit positions, but when they are in the middle, uh, they start to shake. So it doesn't influence the kinematics. The kinematics still, maybe surprisingly, works as we suggested. But this is not good for, for the overall efficiency of the system. So this is one of the problem of, of the mechanical solution. It's not a problem of the concept. And uh, we already have a possible solution for that. And uh, my colleagues are assembling the prototypes, hopefully right now. So, uh, but back to the performance, this is just a combination of the pitch moment and of the high-speed camera measurements. We can see that the pitch moment can be linearly related to the, to the offset of the wings. So this means the camera measurements can be used as an estimate of the uh, produced moments and forces. So this is when we go a little bit faster. Uh, at the top we have the pitch moment, so as we go faster we can see that for the limit uh, joint positions, the moment increases. So the maximum tested uh, performance is highlighted there. The pitch moment between 0 .7, minus 0 0.7 and plus 1.1 millinewton meter. And uh, the lift during the test was above 90 millinewton, which is not enough to lift that, of course. But uh, we were not at the maximum performance of the motor. But we didn't want to go further. We didn't want to break it because we wanted to do some other tests with the prototype. OK, this is just a comparison uh, for combined command. So we have the pitch moment and uh, the lift force. So we observe the same as in only when we are controlling only the pitch. So here we also control the roll. We cannot measure the roll moment, but we can see that the roll command has very small effect on the pitch force. And uh, in lift, again, we can see a drop uh, of lift in the central position. This is the same reason. This is the sh uh, shaking joints. Again, just comparison with the high-speed camera, uh, the pitch moment relates well to the average offset and the lift it relates well to the square of, of the wing speed, which is calculated as amplitude times frequency squared mean wing speed. So, okay. Okay, now something more interesting. So, uh, we did some uh, tests where we attached the system to to a test bench uh, which has uh, which leaves two degrees of freedom to, to, to the prototype, so it can uh, rotate around the roll and pitch axis. Uh, we have stabilized the system. We added some additional mass so that the center of gravity was below the center of rotation, and uh, we showed that we can deviate it from its equilibrium by the generated moments. So here, this is the pitch uh, test. So. First, it go, the frequency goes up, and you will see the command at the, over here. So now you can see that we go to the maximum, we go to the minimum. It still has the two degrees of freedom, so it can still uh, move in the roll direction as well, but it doesn't 
very much. So you can see the de decoupling is pretty good. Uh, it stops at the physical limits of, of the system, so otherwise it could uh, deflect a little bit further. Okay, so this was the pitch. We did the same test in roll. So again, you, you have the command on the right in the blue rectangle. So we go up to the operating frequency and then we go right, left. So the moment generation seems to work fine. Now, as I said, for the yaw moment, we were not sure if it is going to work. But we just did that, so we attached the prototype to, uh, well, the, it's actually a piece of heat shrink tube, uh, which served as a torsion spring, so it returns the system always to the same position. So it is similar to the pendulum system we have observed before. And so here, we first increase the frequency, now, it is, now it's at the operating frequency, and now we give the command, so you can see it can turn clockwise, counterclockwise. Uh, from the video, it may be not so apparent, but our feeling was that here, the mechanism struggles more to turn, so it is not optimal solution, but yet it generates some yaw moments. We couldn't quantify them because we don't have uh, any load cell to measure it on. Okay, so this is the end of my talk. Just to conclude, uh, we have observed that uh, the concept is a, of joint displacement is a viable solution. By small joint displacement, we can uh, produce large enough uh, differences in our modifications of the offset of the mean wing position and the amplitude. We can produce sufficiently large pitch moment. We have observed very good level of decoupling. That means we should be able to use this solution for pitch roll and possibly even yaw control. The advantage is that it works with any wing design, unlike the previously tested solution, which uh, plays with the wing slack, basically, or with the slack in the wing. Um, but it is tied to the specific flapping mechanism. So if one day we decided to use an alternative, we cannot use this anymore. And uh, as for the design, the design needs to, mechanical design needs to be improved. It showed quite good dynamics, but the, the problem is the shaking joints. We have a solution which should fix this. Um, so yeah, our hopes are high. Um, for the future work, so that's improving the robustness, the reducing the weight, because obviously now the system is too heavy. And uh, we, are, we have already started some closed loop test bench experiments where we add uh, an iner inertial measurement unit on the setup and we want to stabilize um, the angles when the system is unstable. And uh, well, maybe one day we will achieve hovering flight. I would like to thank you for your attention and thank to my colleagues and other people that contributed to, to the uh, project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for your work. Uh, I think this is going to be uh, a very interesting work to, to see that, uh, that more and more people manage to get all, yeah, all kinds of, uh, at all kinds of scale, a uh, full uh, 3D flapping mechanism. Um, are there any questions uh, from the audience? For, so you want to yeah, make it lighter, let's say? Yes. So the question is, uh, what are the difficulties to make it lighter? Uh, so there are, I would say, two. One is uh, the actuators. So for propulsion, I think we cannot find anything lighter that would be powerful enough. But for the servo drives, this is where we have to reduce the weight. So um, six grams is just too much. I think three grams would be like the, the limit for us. So this is what we have to do. Of course, we will have less power with lighter actuators, um, but the new solution we work on should work with lower uh, power. But we will see. We haven't tested it yet. Uh, as for the structure, there I think we can uh, uh, optimize things, because now we just build it so that it's robust. So because if we make a design change, we have to wait, let's say, a month before uh, 
between the, it takes a month from the design to having assembled prototype, which is too much. And so it's a bit annoying when you have a new prototype and something breaks there. So we just overdimension everything at the moment just to have consistent results. Uh, so I think there is a lot of space. And uh, of course, now we are using 3D printing where the material properties are not optimal. So one day when we arrive to a solution which will be working, we will probably change the technology to produce something with the same strength, but lighter. Another question in the front? Yeah, uh, of course, that depends on the hummingbird. If we go to the beginning, we also see hummingbirds like this one. Well, the tail is cut, but it has no tail, or very little tail. But it can still uh, deform its body, so it can still play with, with the center of gravity. So, yeah, but of course, we are not uh, aiming at doing some aerial acrobacy at the moment. Our goal is just to make it stable, and of course, the next step will be to improve that. So definitely, the tail can help, that's for sure. But we just want to show that the, the simple hovering can be done only with the wing motion modifications. You showed that perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. If there's a last question, maybe, for lunch. So, so the question was whether we used uh, um, some of the um, artificial muscles. So, um, actually, we use that not in the flapping mechanism, but in the control mechanism. In the work I presented last year, we used shape memory alloys for that. Uh, the problem was that uh, if you want high bandwidth, you will get very small forces, or you can get larger forces, but then you get uh, low bandwidth, it is too slow for the control mechanism. Yes, yes. But uh, I mean, we, we use that too for the second strategy we, we worked on. But so you don't need to have something that works at the flapping frequency, but you still need something that works sufficiently fast so that uh, it doesn't introduce too big time delays into your system. And um, we just found out that with this type of actuators, currently, it's probably not a feasible solution. Well, let's uh, thank the author again. And this